You are watching Go Saskatoon. I am Curtis Anderson. Huge day on Go Saskatoon. I'm backstage at TCU Place, crossing another interview off my list of dream interviews. Ladies and gentlemen, Blue Rodeo Zone, Greg Keeler. Ten years I've been doing this job. I swear I've interviewed Cuddy like seven times, and I, I hope I didn't uh, insult him. So no, we just passed to the hallway, and I was like, hey, Cuddy, can we... Uh, Maybe Greg, Greg this time. He's not going to hold a grudge? All, oh, he won't, no, because I usually he does them all. And, you know, I think in those other years, I was always just too stoned to come up before, you know, so I always made him go do them all. And we're off. You get the call. You're going back to Saskatoon. What's the first thing that pops into your head when you hear Saskatoon, Greg? Saskatoon is one of my favorite towns. Uh, it's, uh, it reminds me of Canada when I first started traveling around Canada. So Jim and I... After high school, we bought a school bus with two other friends, and we gutted it and made it into a, like a, a camper. And we came across Canada in 74. Okay. And Canada was very different back then. Yep. And, you know, and uh, so Saskatoon always sort of reminds me of that. I saw you in the main theater, I believe it was 2008, 2009, and you talk about people sitting there and listening to you instead of partying. However, even in the theater setting, I remember there was one young woman that was dancing in the aisle, and after every song, she would yell, best band ever! <laughs> when you can get that reaction in a sit-down venue, how does that make you feel? Oh, it's good, and usually now, uh, by the end of the set, we get everybody up. Mm -hmm. You know. It's sort of funny in these these venues across Canada, you know, the, the ushers, you know, uh, bless their hearts. So usually older women, okay, you know, and and you know people get up to dance and you can see them walking down the aisle. They go, would you please sit down, please? Sit down. <laughs> and so the people sit down and then some people get up and then this old lady will come down. You have to sit down. But then by the end of the night we sort of get everybody up and it's, it's chaos. Okay. Yeah. This is why I really wanted to talk to you, okay? This is, this is a question that's been burning me for like five, six years. Okay, I got married really young, 20 years old, my wife and I, right? To say that people didn't really support our decision is like saying Blue Rodeo sold a couple of albums. <laughs> See what I did there? Anyways, uh, I'm reading an article about 2007, 2008, about the song Lost Together, which was our first dance song. Oh, isn't that sweet? Because... I mean, if you want a love song that's a beautifully written song, but still, uh, you know, hey, if we're lost, we're lost together. Back right. off song. It's perfect. And you were talking about how you were kind of baffled by why it's so popular and so many people use it as a wedding song because you wrote it to be more of like a yell around a campfire song. And I was like, oh, you hurt me right here. It just tore up my no, wedding no, song I'm, heart. I'm, I'm, so has that, has that changed or was I'm that, very glad was that, that misquoted? That, yeah, it's misquoted. Really? Yeah, I'm okay. very happy that. That uh, I probably Jim said that that I wrote it as a campfire song because you know you've only talked to him. I don't think I I would have said that because nope. I, I didn't think of it as a campfire song when I wrote it. And it gets played at funerals too, which hmm. is I even sang it at one funeral. Really? Yeah. Th this couple when they were uh, courting. They went on a trip to the uh, Maritimes, and uh, I guess our record had just come out then, you know, whatever year that was. And so they put that, that, that was their song. They, they didn't have a map, and they would just drive around the Maritimes, and their song was lost together. And they would just, mm -hmm. wherever they saw a motel or a hotel, or you know, they, they would just stay there, and they just travel around and, and do that. And so the, the husband died young, and, and the... And the wife phoned and asked me to sing it at their wedding, hmm. a funeral. I would say it was probably about 90, 91 that song came out, because I remember recording the video on a VHS tape off of YTV's hit list with Tarzan Dan. That's, I'm dating myself, but yeah. <laughs> Final question before I let you go. Um, I had the chance to sit down and interview Jay Semko just one week ago, and I asked him, you know, throughout his career, when was it the funnest for him, you know? And he really thought about it. He said, honestly, I think when he looks back at the good days, he said it never got better than when he was first starting out, playing in a sweaty gym to his friends and going, you know what? We sound pretty good. <laughs> so for you, sir, what was the, the best time? 
throughout your illustrious career. That's all great. You know, the early days are all great, you know, but it seems like another lifetime to me. So it'd be hard to me to vividly recall, you know, <laughs> playing in all those sweaty bars, which I loved. I loved. And I would think my favorite thing now, is, you know, making this last record, you know, I, I sort of prefer the studio to live now. Like, I, mm -hmm. I really love working in the studio. And, if, and when we're not on the road, I'm making records with other people at my place. And, and that's sort of like my favorite thing now. And making this record was, was a great experience for the band. Thank you very much, sir. Thank that's you. all I got. Very good.